photoluminescence spectrometer from spot team. The main concept of the photoluminescence phenomenon is that the interaction of the light with the matter by the mean of absorption and re-emission of the spectra from the surface of samples such as the nano materials and the nanoparticles. The main phenomena in this spectrometer is that when the light is passing through the monochromator which is filtering the multiple wavelength light into a single wavelength light that and then this single light which is the monochromatic light is falling on the sample surface that absorbs this monochromatic light and after some certain time that re-emits this light in form of a spectra which is called a emission spectra from the sample surface that which is absorbed by the sample and is re-emitted after some time in form of many wavelengths which is furtherly we are putting that under a, another filter a monochromator which is again filtering that re-emission spectrum and then re-emission spectrum which is filtered again by the monochromator is detected by a detector and the intensity and the wavelength of this spectra is recorded by a recorder in form of the graph and samples such as we can say the zinc oxide and the zinc sulfate there may be the many samples we can use the further filtered light monochromatic light with a single wavelength is actually detected and which is recorded in form of the graph the sample we can take like the zinc oxide and the zinc sulfate so this is the recorder of monochromatic filtered again which is re-emitted again from the surface from the absorption to the re-emission and then filtered again then detected then recorded by a recorder and this is this atom of a sample where the light is actually we are throwing the light on the sample and when the light interacts with the atoms the electrons are excited and they move toward the higher energy cells and the moment then when they move to the higher energy cell the time taken is let's say the t is time time taken and in the excited state the electrons is staying in the excited state for time e and after a certain of time like microsecond or femtoseconds or after maybe after after a few minutes or after some hours the this spectrum is re-emitted from the sample again and this re-emitted sample is the re-emission of the spectrum from the sample is furtherly filtered again by the monochromator and then again we receive the monochromatic light which is furtherly detected and the recorded graph is analyzed so this is actually the atom which where the electron is excited and moving, moving in the higher cell then coming back to the ground state energy levels and emitting the spectrum so this is the phenomenon under the photoluminescence that happens and this is the time the t1 te and t2 the absorption time excitement time where the electron is staying in the excited state and t2 is the relaxation time coming down back on the original energy state one more clear picture from the photoluminescence happening on the surface of or inside the sample is that when the spectrum is absorbed by the sample the electrons are getting energy from that uh, source light and electrons are jumping to the higher energy cells and which is in form of excitation state and excited state they stay there for, for some time and they return back they return back after some time passing through the uh, conduction band the, when they fall, when they fall down back to the, their original cell, original state where they age used to be, they just fall down back to in, in their original uh, state of the cell. They re-emit the spectrum, re-emission of the spectrum from the transition of electron, and that the transition between two cells is a band gap. This gap from the two cells 
the gap between two cells where transition is happening the spectrum is emitted this is the spectrum which is emitted and the conduction band is actually a gap between two cells where the electron is electron transition is taking place this is the energy of the incident light we throw on the sample of surface and after the re-emissions the frequency change because of the re-emitted spectra so wavelength is changing so this is the change in energy this is the original spectrum and this is re-emitted spectrum so the intensity of the re-emitted spectrum and wavelength of re-emitted spectrum which is filtered again in form taking in a form of monochromatic light a monochromatic filtered spectrum and furthermore let's say that the zinc atom transition of electron from the zinc atom to the oxygen atom and cells gap the energy required from electron jumping from here to there and coming into the conduction band the energy required is actually the energy which is we are providing from the outside so this is this gap between two cells of two atoms oxygen and the zinc this gap if this is a semiconductor then this requires some minimum energy or maximum energy to jump the electron to go to the conduction band to get excited and when this returns back that re emits the absorption light in form of different spectra this is the graph of the wavelength which is taken from the re-emitted spectrum from the absorption and this is the intensity of the re-emitted spectrum so we are sketching the graph with lambda wavelength and the intensity and this is the range of wavelength from 300 to 800 and intensity is this so for the zinc oxide this is the graph of intensity and wavelength zinc oxide and for zinc sulfate and se jaron s s e for this semiconductor the graph is this one and for the zinc sulfate the graph is actually this there's a exponential growth and then peak the peak then there is a fall again in the intensity at the 800 nanometer wavelength the intensity fall down so these three peaks are for three semiconductors these are taken in the sample and this is the graph of photoluminescence we when analyze the zinc oxide and jordan ssc and jordan s so there are many samples that we can characterize by using the photoluminescence and we can measure the band gap we can analyze the emission spectrum from the nanomaterials and by using the photoluminescence spectrometer we can determine the band gap of semiconductor impurity and defect in the nanomaterials to study the surface structure of nanomaterials there are many applications of photoluminescence technique to characterize the nanomaterials thank you